Oh, no, what horrid weather. I think I'll close the curtains. Yeah. There, that's much better. <laughs> oh, no, we've had a power cut. Never mind, I always carry with me my trusty torch. <laughs> oh, this is a bit spooky, though, isn't it? Oh, what was that? Oh, it's just me standing on my keyboard. <laughs> I really must learn to tidy away better, you know. Oh, brilliant! The lights are back on. And all this spookiness has given me a great idea. Enter, if you dare, a crazy, creepy castle. <laughs> Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! Some kitchen roll tubes. Some spooky coloured paint. A silver pen. Some pointy ice cream tubs. A box. And some gloopy PVA glue! Whoa! Now, to make your very own creepy castle, like this one here, first paint your box and your two kitchen roll tubes in a nice creepy colour. Now, you can choose whatever colour you like, but I think this spooky purple will look really good. When your paint is dry, leave these pieces to one side and we can start painting our pointy ice cream tubs. Now, I think we should choose another spooky colour like this scary pink here. Now, to do that, we need to make a painty mixture that's half paint and half gloopy glue. Now, this will help the paint stick to the tub. There we go. Let's give it a mix. Then paint both of your ice cream tubs and leave them to dry. Now we need to glue our pieces together. So let's get our box and lay it on its front like that. And then get one of the kitchen roll tubes and glue it on one side. Now I'm going to put this one quite high up on one side. There. And then the other kitchen roll tube can go on the opposite side. And this one is going to go about halfway. Now we can leave this to dry. When it's all nice and dry, turn the box back over so we can draw on some spooky windows and a spooky door. Now, for that, we'll need a silver pen. Now, a tall, pointy art shape like this looks good for the door. And you can do smaller ones like this for the windows. Next, fill in all the windows and the door with black paint. Then, to make the castle look extra creepy, how about painting slime oozing out of the tubes? And how about some slime coming out of the door and the windows too? Let's get painting. Now, to finish off, put your painted ice cream tubs on top of the tubes. Look at that! A creepy castle! And you can keep building up your creepy castle with all sorts of boxes, tubes and containers. So it gets even creepier! Wow! What a huge creepy castle! <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's it! Oh, I've had enough of this spooky weather. <laughs> that should do it. Now, if I open the curtains again... <laughs> wow! That's much better! <laughs> Doesn't this torn paper picture look brilliant? It's great fun to make and looks so good that you'll be able to frame it. You'll need coloured paper, coloured pencils and glue. First, rip a piece of paper into strips. 
You can use green like this for the grass. Why not make your rips nice and curvy, like this? Then put one of the straight edges at the bottom, here. And stick the next strip on top of it, so that it overlaps like this. Now stick the next strip on top again, so that it overlaps once more. Carry on until you've stuck all of your green strips together. Now do it all again, but with another colour. You could use blue for the sky. Remember to make the strips nice and curvy. This time, make sure one of your straight edges is at the top. Then stick it on top of the next strip so that it overlaps like this. Then stick the next strip underneath so it overlaps again. Carry on until all the strips are stuck together. Then stick the two parts of the picture together with the blue part at the top. Now turn it over. Look, there's the sky and the rolling hills. What a great looking landscape. And if you want to add some details, you can. How about a castle? And maybe a road. You could even add flowers as a finishing touch, like this. Doesn't it look amazing? The torn paper strips make it look as if the landscape is going off into the distance. What a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is frame it. <laughs> right, here's what we're going to make today. It's a pebble dog. Yes, man's best friend made out of pebbles. Now to make a pebble dog, you need two pebbles, a big one and a small one. You'll also need some glue a pen and some white stickers. Now don't worry, if you haven't got these stickers, you could draw circles on white paper and cut them out. You'll also need a rectangle shaped piece of brown paper and some scissors. Now do you think it's possible to make a pebble dog in just a minute? No way! Really? Let's find out. I'm gonna have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Stop the car! Let's go! Let's first get our piece of brown paper, fold it in half, and then very carefully with our scissors, let's cut out an ear shape like this. There we go, round and round. There, be careful. And when that's done, you can open it up. Let's get our big pebble and put some glue on the back. There we go, like that. And then you can stick that down to the ears. Ah, he's taking shape now. Let's give him some eyes. Gonna use the white stickers for these. There's one eye. And there's two eyes. Let's add some dots for the eyes. There's one and there's two. I need some more glue now on our small pebble. There. There we go. That's on. And I can just finish him off with my pen. Whoop. Whoop. Boop, 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 boop. A pebble dog. Time. Just made it. Phew. When it's dry and you've got more than a minute, you could paint his nose. Look, he looks great. And there are so many different shapes and sizes you can try, like this. This dog's grey with a brown nose. This one's got a black ring around its eye. And this dog's got big floppy ears. A pebble dog made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. 
Fold a piece of paper in half. Cut out an ear shape. Then glue the pebble to the middle of the unfolded ears. Stick on white stickers for eyes. And add two black dots in the middle. Stick on a pebble for the nose. And draw a mouth on your pebble dog. Try making it in a minute. Right, this is what we're going to make today. Alien eyes. Funny eyes you can wear on your head. Take me to the sweetheart. <coughs> Only joking. Now, to make these alien eyes, you will need two cake cases from your kitchen, like that, two long pipe cleaners, a pen, a plastic hairband. Do you think it suits me? No? Oh, OK. And some sticky tape. Now, do you think we can make these alien eyes in a minute? No way! Really? Oh. Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to move very quickly, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it all at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute! Right, OK, let's get the plastic hairband first and a pipe cleaner. Now, this bit's a bit fiddly. Watch, you twist once and twist again so it's nice and secure. And then do the same with the other pipe cleaner. Here we go, twist and twist again so it's nice and secure. Right, move back to the side and get the cake cases. These are going to be eyes, so we need to draw on black dots. Here we go. There's one black dot there. And there's two black dots. Now, do these look like eyes? Do they? Do they? Of course they do. Right, let's stick them on then. My granny can go quicker. I'm going as quick as I can. Keep your feathers on. Right, a bit of tape there. And a bit of tape there. Flip it over. And let's stick them down. There's one. And there's two. There we go. I've done it. Only just. That was close. Phew. And if you've got more than a minute, you can colour in the eyes any colour you like. The weirder, the better. Ooh. Or how about trying three eyes? Hilarious alien eyes made in a minute. Why don't you try it? And here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Get a pipe cleaner and twist the ends of it around the hairband on one side. Do the same on the other side and draw two eyes on the cake cases. Stick the cake cases onto the ends of the pipe cleaners and you've got alien eyes. Why don't you try to make it in a minute? Whoa! Oh! 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 Hello there. Great to see you. Oh, it's a bit windy today. Look. Oh! 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 Sorry about that. I did... What's going on up there? How did that get there? God. How did they get there? Hmm. Leaves? And a twig. Hmm, that gives me an idea. You can bring the outside inside and try your very own mini tree out of twigs. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Some cardboard. Some glue. Ball. No, I don't think we need this. And some dried peas, beans and lentils. Phew! Whoa! Now, to make your twig picture, like this one here, arrange your twigs onto your cardboard in the shape of a tree. When you're happy with your tree. Are you happy with your tree? I'm very happy with my tree, thank you. Then stick it down with some glue. Now, stick a blob here, stick a blob there, and leave it to dry. This 
tree's looking a bit bare. Let's add some leaves. Put a few extra blobs of glue onto your tree and start sticking your peas and beans. Look, I've put peas and beans over the branches to look like leaves. And these lentils and beans look great as the ground. Now, if you want to make a sparkly tree, you could add sequins or glitter. Wow, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? And if you like this idea, you could paint the background as a night sky and make a scary, spooky tree with bats. Ooh. Bats? I don't like bats. Oh, oh. Oh no! Why don't you try making a mini tree out of twigs? Oh. Look at this busy city picture. It's easy to draw once you know the secret, and it looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You'll need two different coloured felt tip pens, some sticky tape, and a piece of paper. And here's the secret take a piece of sticky tape and tape your two pens together, and look what you can do. You can draw two lines at the same time. To draw your city picture, just draw lots of straight lines up, across and down. Add lots of squiggles and dots. This is a really great way of making your picture look like it's busy and moving. What a good idea! You could even try a butterfly. It looks like it's fluttering. Or a radio. It looks like it's playing loud music. What a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is frame it. I love making pictures out of all sorts of things. Oh, it's got a bit cold in here. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to go on holiday again. Somewhere nice and hot. Oh, I can see it now. The splashing of the waves, the sand beneath my toes, and all the sand castles I'd make. <sighs> Hmm, just a minute. Why wait until holiday time? We can bring the beach to us. This gives me an idea. A sensational sandcastle you can build in your home that will last forever. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> Two cardboard tubes from a kitchen roll. An empty washing up liquid bottle. Some sticky white PVA glue. A clean empty pie tray. And a kitchen tray. Whoa! We'll also need lots of play sand, which you can get from a toy shop or a DIY store. I'll be back in a tick. I've got it. Now, to make your everlasting sandcastle like this one here, get one of your kitchen roll tubes and very carefully cut it in half. But be careful because scissors are sharp. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> There. Now, to make the top of the turrets, that's these bits here, we need to make snips all the way around. Now, this is a bit difficult, so it might be best to ask an adult to help you. There. Now, fold every other flap forward 
like this. And then cut these off very carefully with your scissors. You can do this around the top of your taller tube as well. There, two turrets. Now we need to cut a door shape like this into our larger tube. Now, this is a bit difficult again, so it's probably best to ask an adult to help you. There, a door shape. Now, let's leave our turrets to the side and get our tray, because we've got to fill it with sand. Here we go. There. Now, when your tray is full of sand, bring back in one of your turrets, here's the small one, and cover it completely in glue. Now, I'm going to cover it on the outside, all the way round, and even inside it too. Cover the whole thing in sand, by rolling it into the sand. There it goes, making sure some gets inside. Roll it over and over. There. That's looking quite good. And when you're happy, put it to the side and leave it to dry. Now do the same to your other tube, the pie case and the washing up bottle. When all your pieces have been covered in sand and the glue has dried, you can start building a sand castle. There! Very nice, but it needs a finishing touch. How about a flag made out of some paper and a straw? Let's stick it in. There! Brilliant! And you can make your sandcastle as big as you like by adding lots and lots of different things. Like this one! Wow! It's great! And this sandcastle is even better than the real thing because it lasts forever! Ah! Why don't you try and make it? Here's an idea that's out of this world. A fantastic space picture. It's easy to do, but looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. This is a great way of using chalks, some dark paper and different size rolls of sticky tape or anything with a hole in the middle like this biscuit cutter. Now it's time to make lots of dust with your coloured chalk. Get a scrap of paper and rub chalk all over the page. When you've got lots of dust in different colours, you're ready to start. Put one of the sticky tapes or biscuit cutters onto the paper. Then dip your finger in the coloured dust. Now gently dab your chalky finger inside your sticky tape, like this. Try and make one side darker than the other, just like a real planet. That's great! And why not make a bigger planet with a bigger shape cutter and another colour? You can do as many planets as you like. Now let's add some stars with some white chalk. Look, an amazing space picture. Why don't you have a go? What a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is frame it. Brilliant. Now. No, nothing. Oh. You have a listen. See if you can hear the sea. Did you hear anything? <coughs> you did? Oh. Let's try another one. Ah, right. 
No, nothing. Uh, how about another lesson? Did you hear the sea? <coughs> you did? Really? Oh, OK. One more. Let's try one more. OK. Whoa! There we go. Right, let's have a listen to this one. Nothing again. All right, just check one last time. <coughs> right, that time, did you hear anything? <coughs> you did? What? Oh, this gives me an idea, actually. Let's try something. A brilliant picture made out of shells that looks amazing. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> Two big shells. <laughs> some cardboard. Some pebbles. A piece of string. Some glue. The thick wallet type works well. And some paint. Right, to make your shell picture like this one here, first paint your cardboard. Now you can use any colour you like, but I'm going to choose blue. Make sure you paint the whole thing. And when it's dry, place two big shells on the cardboard like this with a gap down the middle, there. Now these are going to be the wings. Then put a line of pebbles down the middle. And these are going to be the body and the eyes. <laughs> and last but not least, get a piece of string. And this will be the antennae. It's a butterfly. Now stick all of your bits down with glue and you can add a few extra pebbles as well. And now paint it all over. Use really bright colours to make it stand out. But you don't have to make a butterfly. You can make anything you want. How about a peacock? Made out of buttons and beads. Shells make great pictures and you can use any shells you like. Oh, I can hear something. It sounds like a massive wave. Oh. I'm going to do some stargazing. Now, let's have a look. Ooh. Ah. Oh, what's that? Oh, I can't quite see. I think I'm going to need a bigger telescope to take a closer look. Ooh. Oh, this should do it. Hmm. Let's have another look. Ah. Oh. Oh. No, no, he's not there. I must have been mistaken. Phew! Oh, hmm. This has given me an idea, though. Let's make something. A fantastic space age city, fit for friendly aliens to live in. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> Some empty plastic containers. You'll need to collect lots of different shapes and sizes. Some paint. A hideous tie. Oh, no. 
That's not my colour. <laughs> and a black pen. Whew. Whoa! Now, to make your very own space age city, like this one here, start off by painting one of your containers with grey paint. And once it's dry, paint parts of the container in bright colours. You can paint whatever colour you like, but I'm going to start with orange. There, that's looking good. Now I'm going to add a little bit of blue. There. Now keep going until you've done a few parts in different colours. Finish off by adding some extra details with a black felt tip pen. Give your space building lots of windows, doors and space age landing pads. And there you have it. One space age building. And you can make lots and lots of space age buildings. In fact, find and decorate as many containers as you can. Whoa! And the more buildings you make, the bigger your space age city will grow. Wow! So why don't you have a go at making a space age city fit for friendly aliens? But of course, as everyone knows, there's no such thing as aliens. What? Hey? My eyes must be playing tricks on me. There's definitely no such thing as aliens. Oh, yes, there is. Do you like my new car? Hey! Wow, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. I've always wanted to build it some roads. I've got some designs here, actually. Let's have a look. Uh, no, I don't like that design. Uh, oh, um, no, I don't like that one. Let's have a look. Aha! No, I don't like that. Oh, I do like that, though. These torn edges have given me an idea. Let's try something. Try using torn paper to make an incredible street that can reach as far as you want it to go and can have anything you want on it. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Some coloured pages from an old magazine. A square of coloured card. A paintbrush. And some brown paint. Whew. Now, to make your street like this one here, you first need to use your brown paint and paint a thick brown stripe in the centre of your card. Now this looks great on blue card, but if you haven't got any blue card, don't worry, you can always paint it blue yourself. Next you need some brightly coloured paper that you've torn out of some old magazines, and then tear them up some more. <laughs> And then, sort them into piles of different colours, like this. Now you're ready to start designing your street. Can you guess what I'm going to make first? Hmm. Look! 
It's a house. Now stick on the doors and windows. <laughs> Let's decorate the rest of it. You could make a tree. That can be made by using a strip of brown. And a bigger piece of green. In fact, you could decorate your street with lots more trees and lots more grass. It's a great effect, isn't it? And I've even put a little pink pig walking down the street. But to make your street longer, you need to make more squares. You can fill your squares with anything you like. Let's take a closer look. Whoa, here we are. Why not try making a crossroads? It looks like a road that's cross-shaped. Or even a curved road, so all of your streets connect together. You can go as far as you like. Why don't you try and make it? Ooh, and always look out for traffic. Yeah, I think I ought to make a torn paper zebra crossing. Time to get out of here. Ooh, that was close. Why don't you have a go at making a torn paper road as big or as small as you like? I have been learning how to knit. Yeah. Take a look at my new jumper. Ah. Oh, well, it is a little bit big, I suppose, but that doesn't matter, because I need some wool for something we're going to make today. Now, if I just unpick a little tiny bit from here, like this... Perfect! And now that we've got our wool, we can try something! Try making a picture of a tree using wool. That looks great! Right. Jumper off. Jacket on. Let's make it. As well as some wool, we'll need some things from the doodle drawer. Some pieces of coloured paper. A glue stick. And some paint. Whoa. Now, to make your wool picture, like this one here, Take your piece of paper and fold it in half, like this. And then open it out again. Now for the really fun, really messy part. Take a piece of wool and dip it completely in green paint. Yuck, this is really gooey. Okay, and now pick up the painty wool and twist and twirl it all over one half of your paper, like that. And then fold it over again. Here we go. And push down hard, like that. And then carefully remove the wool. And it comes. There. And now, if we open it up again. There! Very nice, eh? Do the same again with a lighter colour. Hmm, looking good. Now do the same again with yellow paint. Hey, what a great pattern. Now I'm going to make it into the tree, but first I'm going to wipe my hands. Now, take a rectangle of brown paper. And if you haven't got brown paper and you've only got white, you could paint it brown. Fold it in half like that, and then get some scissors. Now, be careful because scissors are sharp. 
OK, now cut a curve on the open side. Like that, and then get some glue and stick it down underneath your woolly print. There, it's a wonderful woolly tree. You can try loads of other ideas using wool. Once you've tried a tree, why not do a woolly monster's mad hair? Use any colour of paint you like. Or even a running tap. Doesn't it look effective? So why don't you try making some amazing woolly pictures? And remember, you can just get some wool by pulling any old jumper apart. <laughs> what? Oh, I see. You're quite right. You should never pull a jumper apart unless you've got permission from an adult. Or permission from a jumper. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, all right. I'd, uh, yeah, I'd love to dance. <laughs> Great dancing. Thanks. I've been planting some seeds in my window box. Wow, they're going to look fantastic. Now I'm just going to add some of this special grow very fast and strong mixture to my water. There we go, just sprinkle some in there and then pour it on. <gasps> wow, that works really well. Oh. Got some other seeds here, this time grass seeds. Ah, these give me an idea. Let's make something. A hilarious head with a grass hairdo you can watch grow because it's grown from grass seed. Let's make it. As well as our seeds, we'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> some cotton wool. Some elastic bands. A pipe cleaner. A paper cup. An old pair of tights. No, only joking. We... Oh, no, actually, we do need an old pair of tights. Ooh. And some of these grass seeds. Now, to make a grass head, like this fella here, First, cut one foot from the old pair of tights. But be very careful because scissors are sharp. Here we go. Now, put some of your grass seeds into your tight. Now, these are going in to the toe part, so I'll just give them a bit of a shake so they're all down the bottom. There we go. And now we're ready to add a big ball of cotton wool into the tight and on top of the seeds. Now tie a knot in the open end, like this, to keep it all in place. Now we can pinch out a nose shape from the middle, like this, and fix it in place with an elastic band. Go. There. Now do the same on either side of the head for the ears. Now you may want to ask an adult to help you with this bit because it's a bit fiddly. Then get two googly eyes. You can make these by drawing them on white paper and cutting them out or you can go to an art and craft shop and buy them. Excuse I. Whoa. Ah, here are my googly eyes. Let's stick them on. Let's get some glue. There's one. And there's two. 
Great, nearly done, but he needs a mouth. And for that, we'll use a piece of pipe cleaner or a piece of wool. Then put your grass head into a paper cup. There we go. And pop him in a sunny place. Now, if you water him every day, within about a week, he'll start sprouting grass hair. But I don't want to wait a week to show you, so I'm going to use some of my very special Grow Very Fast and Strong mixture. And once you've grown a grass head, you can even style his hair by giving him a trim, like this. Oi, what's the hair do? Oh, sorry, Mr. Grass Head. <laughs> Here's what we're going to make today. It's a handy pot that holds a lot. A lot of what? Whatever you want, really. It's really handy and it looks great. Look at its amazing torn out nighttime scene. Now, to make this pot, you'll need a pot. An empty one, really, like this. You'll also need some sticky tape, some glue, lots of different coloured stickers, including some stars, and some sheets of coloured paper. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just a minute? No way! Really? Let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute! Right, the first thing to do is to get our black bit of paper and start tearing any shape you like, up and down, up and down. Now, this is going to make the torn out nighttime scene. There we go, get that bit there, move that down. It doesn't matter what shape you make, that's the beauty of this idea. I'm ready to go quicker. I'm going as quick as I can, Toki. There we go. Right, now get the other bit of coloured paper and some glue and stick this, there we go, along there. And stick it on to our red, like that. Hurry up! Now let's get some stickers on. There's one, there's two. And there's three. And how about some stars in the sky? There's one and two there. Right, now let's get this and put it around our top like that and stick it with some tape. Done! I'm... Just in time. And when you've finished, it can hold whatever you want, like pencils, some paintbrushes, and even a plant. And if you've got more than a minute, why not try some other torn out designs, like a seaside? Or even a countryside one? It's a pot that holds a lot, made in a minute. Why don't you try it? And here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Tear some black paper to make a nighttime scene. Put on some glue and then stick it to the red paper. Add some stickers for windows and stars. Then stick it around your handy pot like this. Try making it in a minute. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, hello there. Whoa, it's freezing outside today. Oh no, I've left the window open. Wow, look at the snow! Ah, oh, aren't snowflakes great? Hmm, this has given me an idea. Let's try something. A brilliant colour pattern that's made using a paper snowflake. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> Some coloured paint. Some paper. Some pieces of sponge. 
And some scissors. Woo! Now, to make a pattern with a snowflake like this one here, first fold a square of paper in half and then in half again. And then fold one corner over to the other to make a triangle. Now get your scissors. But be careful because scissors are sharp. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to cut one of the corners off here in a curve shape like this. Now we're going to cut shapes out of the two straight sides here. Now you can pick any shape you want, but I think I'm going to do a triangle first. Here we go, triangle coming up. Now the most important thing to remember is to leave space between your shapes, like this. I'm going to do a curve shape now, I think. Why not? There we go. Now I think we need one more shape over here and I'm going to do another triangle. There we go. Now if we unfold our paper shape, we should have, there, a paper snowflake. Lay your snowflake shape onto your paper. Like that. And then using a paintbrush or a piece of sponge, dab some paint over the holes. And then when you're done, leave it to dry for a couple of minutes, which will give you time to do whatever you want for a couple of minutes. Oh, that was a quick couple of minutes. Ready to paint. Oh, thank you. Now let's do the same again, but this time twist the snowflake round a bit like that and dab on a different color paint. And then when you're done, leave it to dry for a couple of minutes, which gives you time to do whatever you want for a couple of minutes. <coughs> oh, that was a quick couple of minutes. Ready to paint again. Thank you, again. Now do the same again. Give it a twist. Like that. And dab on a different color. All done. Now let's take the snowflake away. It looks marvellous. What a pattern. And you can try cutting other shapes into your folded paper too, like this. This one's got bigger triangles and diamond shapes. This one's got small sausage shapes in it. And this one's got diamond and petal shapes. Watch this. Any ideas what it is yet? It's a busy city at night. Good job. Look, the buildings are reflected in the river. Look at this great farmyard scene. You can't see anything. Well, hiding on the white paper is a picture that's so good, you'll be able to frame it. You'll need a white wax crayon, some ink, a paintbrush and some shape cutters. You can use any cutter shapes you want, like these. This man shape will look good. Put your shape onto a piece of paper and use a white wax crayon to colour inside it. And no, I'm not going bonkers. You may be wondering, why put white crayon onto white paper? 
You can't see it. Trust me, this is magic. Just wait and see. Let's try some other shapes. How about this rabbit shape? And his good friend the pig. Every farm should have a cat. Meow. As it's very early in the morning, it'll still be dark. So let's put a moon and some stars in the sky. When you're happy with your shapes, colour inside them all with the white wax crayon. Now it's time to see our invisible picture. So get some coloured ink and paint it all over. Here's what we've been waiting for. Look what's happened. The ink won't show in the places where you made your wax crayon shapes, but it will show on the paper. And you've ended up with a great picture. Why don't you have a go using whatever shape cutters you like? What a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is frame it. Fantastic. Oh, wouldn't it be great to be brave and adventurous? Like a spaceman, in fact. I name this planet... Planet Make! Ooh. Ooh. And I'm going to take this space rock home as a souvenir! Oh, if only, eh? Oh. Wait a minute, what's this? Wasn't this the... Oh well, this has given me a great idea. Try making some Spaceman Skittles and a giant space rock. They're out of this world. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> Plastic bottles with lids. Here we go. Plastic washing balls. Some paint and tissue paper. Some masking tape and some gloopy PVA glue. <laughs> some pens, some glitter and some newspaper. Wow! Now, we also need some googly eyes and you can get those from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. Here are our googly eyes. Now, to make space skittles, like this one here, you first need to find a plastic bottle like this with a nice rounded top. Now, you need to make sure that this bottle is completely cleaned out, so you might want to ask an adult to help you with this bit. Then, you can cover it in gloopy glue and bits of ripped up tissue paper. And when it's dry, we can paint it. Now remember that the lid is going to be the spaceman's head and the rest of the bottle is going to be the spacesuit. So paint it whatever colour you like. When it's dry, you can stick on the googly eyes. And now we can add some details with a black pen. You can draw the spaceman's face, his uniform, his boots, and even his backpack. Whatever you want your spaceman to look like, really. <laughs> and then finally, add some colour to your spaceman's suit and his hair with some felt tip pens. Now, pop on your plastic washing ball on top of your spaceman for a perfect fitting space helmet. There he is, a spaceman skittle. Now you need to make some more spaceman skittles. You can make as many as you like, but at least three. Paint them any colour and design that you like and you're almost ready for a game of skittles. But first, we've got to make a big space rock to knock them over. Hey, 
see. Now to make this, just take some newspaper and scrunch it into a big ball shape. Then tape it together with masking tape. And then paint it with rock colored paint. Whilst it's still wet, add some glitter to make it look like a realistic space rock. Now remember to do this on some newspaper or a tray, as this can get a bit messy. And when it's dry, you're ready to have a game. Brilliant. <laughs> and so, like the real thing, you know, I've always wanted to be a spaceman. Ooh. Hey! Ooh. But not this type of spaceman! Time to get out of here! Whoa! That was close! <laughs> now, take a look at this. This is a wonderful washing line picture. It's great fun to make and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need coloured paper, lolly sticks, string, scissors, glue, a pencil, mini pegs, and pictures from an old magazine. Draw a hill on some green paper with a pencil. Then carefully cut it out and glue it to the bottom of a piece of blue paper. Cut out a house shape with different coloured windows and doors from coloured paper. You can even cut out an orange circle for the sun. Then stick all these pieces down. Next, cut a piece of string and lay it across the middle of the paper. Place a lolly stick at each end and glue it all down. This is our washing line. Let's hang up the washing with mini pegs, which you can get from an art and craft shop. If you haven't got any, cut small pieces of cardboard to use instead. Stick the pegs along the string like this. Next, carefully cut out pictures of clothes from an old magazine or catalogue. And peg your washing on the line for a fantastic effect. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that lovely? Oh no, my washing! Well, never mind. I'm just finishing off making this telescope. There, let's give it a try. <laughs> wow! I can see the sea! Oh, and look at that lovely boat! Oh, I wish I was out there on the sea. I'd make a great ship's captain. Oh yes, it's a sailor's life for me. The fresh air, the smell of the sea, and the sight of the ocean. Wait! Oh! Actually, I think I'm probably better sticking to dry land. <laughs> but I have to say that this has given me a great idea. Let's try something. Try making a brilliant porthole picture out of a paper plate. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Come on! Two coloured paper plates. Some paint. Some salt. Some modelling clay and a pencil. Some paper, some glue, and wax crayons. Oh! Now, a porthole is a round window on a ship. So we could call this a porthole picture, with a boat floating on the waves. Let's get started. Now we need two coloured paper plates like this, and we're going to make a hole in one of them. Now, this is a bit tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you. Get a ball of modelling clay and a sharp pencil. Put the modelling clay underneath the plate and then very carefully push through the plate into the clay. Let's take out the pencil and remove the clay. And there, you've got a hole to help you cut out your porthole. 
Let's get cutting, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Next, draw a picture to go in your porthole. You can choose anything you like, but I'm going to do a boat at sea. Add some extra details with paint. Now let's add some waves for the sea. Now we can colour these waves in with a special watery painty mixture. And we make that by putting a squirt of paint into a bowl and then adding some water to make it thinner. Let's give it a mix. OK, let's get painting. When you've done that and the picture is still wet, you need to sprinkle on some salt. Now this will make the sea look really realistic and, um, well, salty. And now we need to leave it all to dry. And look at this. The salt has made the sea look all bumpy and foamy. Now we need to cut out our boat and our waves very, very carefully. Glue these pieces onto the plate, starting by putting the boat in the middle. And now we can glue the waves over the top, like this, and then trim off the extra bits around the edge that we don't need. Finally, glue around the edge of your plate, and then bring in your porthole plate and stick it on top. What a brilliant effect! It's a fantastic porthole picture looking out at a boat at sea. And there are lots of other porthole pictures you can try too. How about this one? A palm tree on a desert island. Or even a lighthouse on a choppy sea. It's up to you. You can make anything. And maybe you'll be so pleased that you'll join me in a I'm so happy I've made a poor hole picture sea jig! <laughs> Ooh! My trousers! Whoops! <laughs> now, take a look at this. This road picture is fun to do and looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need a piece of card, a ruler, a small and large plastic plate, some paints, paint brushes, a pencil and a black pen. To make your road picture, draw round a small plate with a pencil to make a curved line. Do this again with a larger plate just above. This is our road. Next, draw houses on top of the road. Use a ruler to make straight lines. Paint the grass green and the road grey. And then paint the houses and roofs lots of different colours. You can even paint some clouds in the sky. Outline your picture with a black pen and add doors and windows to the houses. Paint white lines along the middle of the road to finish your picture. Isn't it a bright and colourful road? What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Doesn't that look fantastic? I like making pictures out of all sorts of things. There are loads of things you can use to print. A potato. Your hands. Hmm. And this one you've got to try. Soft modelling clay. That gives me an idea. Let's try something. Try using modelling clay to make this great sandcastle sitting on a sunny beach. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Some modelling clay. A 
an old rolling pin, some paint, a piece of paper, and a tray. Ooh. Now, to make your print, like this one here, you need to get a ball of modelling clay and put it in the middle of your tray. Now, don't worry if you haven't got a tray, because you could lay down some old sheets of newspaper instead. Now, get a rolling pin and start rolling out your clay. There. Now, don't make it too thin. It needs to be about the thickness of your little finger. Yeah. Right, and also, you need to roll it out enough so that it covers a bit of paper you're going to print onto. Now, for your design. Take a sharp pencil or a lolly stick and get drawing into the clay. I'm going to draw a beach scene on a sunny day, starting with a palm tree. Hmm, how about a sandcastle? And now we need the sun to be shining in the sky. And when you're happy with your design, it's time to paint. I'm going to use a nice golden sandy colour to make it feel all warm. And cover the whole thing. Quickly and carefully, get your paper and place it on top of your paint. Now push down quite hard and rub your hands all over it. Then carefully peel it off. Look! A print! Now leave it to dry. Fantastic! And it's so easy! You can try lots of other designs too. Like this snowman. Modelling clay printing. It's an easy way to make lots of really clever pictures. Like this rocket. And this flamingo. Why don't you try using modelling clay to make a great picture? Now, take a look at this. It's an umbrella in the rain. Doesn't it look effective? It's really easy to do, but looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need dark coloured paper, a silver pen, a pencil, paint, a brush, glue, beads and buttons, and lots of blue stickers. Draw an umbrella on dark coloured paper with a pencil. Then paint each panel of the umbrella a different colour. When it's dry, outline your umbrella with a silver pen and colour in the handle. To make the rain, stick down your buttons, beads and stickers in lines across the picture. Use small ones at the top and big ones at the bottom. Fantastic! and great fun to do on a rainy day. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Oh dear, looks like rain again. Must be in here some... Ah, ha, ha, ha. Here it is, my crown! <gasps> Look at that! Now, have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a king or a queen? <laughs> I have. If I was a king, I'd have a crown and some kingly robes. Ooh, and I'd have a fantastic throne. <laughs> oh, and I'd have all the adoring people of Makerland. Hello, adoring people of Makerland. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'd have everything to make me into a brilliant king. <laughs> but wait a minute, I've forgotten something. Every king and queen needs a castle. And where am I going to get a castle from? Hey, A castle, a castle. Uh, ooh, a castle. That gives me a great idea. Let's make something. Try making a castle keeper to protect all of your special things. Let's make it! 
I'd better get changed first. We need to get some things from the doodle drawers. An empty tea bag box. Four kitchen roll tubes. An empty plastic food tray. Aha! Some paint. Some gloopy PVA glue, a pair of scissors, and a black pen. Whoa. Now, to make your very own castle keeper, like this one here, which is very useful for keeping all of your special bits and pieces in, you need to start off with a plastic food tray. Now, you need to get an adult to help you find one of these and thoroughly clean it out. Then, turn it upside down like this, because this is going to be the hill that the castle sits on top of. Then get your tea bag box and sit it on top and make sure that the front flap opens like this. Now we're going to get our four kitchen roll tubes and place them in each corner. That's here. Now, everything looks in the right position. I can glue everything in place. When it's dry, you can paint the castle. Now, grey looks really, really good. And you can even paint some dark grey rectangles to look like big stone bricks. Now, don't forget to paint the hill. This hill is going to be grassy green and we'll need a special mixture that's half gloopy glue and half paint. Let's give it a mix. There. Now this will help our special painty mixture really stick onto the plastic tray. Now to make the top of the turrets, that's these bits here, we need to cut six snips at the top of each of the kitchen roll tubes. Now be careful because scissors are sharp. Oh, yes. Yeah. Let's start with this tube here. There's one. There, six snips. Let's put the scissors down. And now we're going to bend inside one of these flaps. Bend one down like that and then leave the next one standing up and push the next one down. Leave the next one up and then push that one down. And that gives us our turrets. Now let's do the same on all of the other kitchen roll tubes. Next, we can add some extra details with a black pen. Add a door, some windows and brick details. You can even add some light and dark green paint to look like moss. But it's up to you. You can add as much detail or as little as you like. <laughs> wow, it's your very own Castle Keeper. <laughs> there it is. So let's open it up and you can keep whatever you like inside. <laughs> like all your arty bits and bobs. Okay. Perfect, very useful. And you can even try to make some other types of castles as well. How about making a fairy tale castle using two boxes and painting it pink and purple? Or even, ooh, a really big castle with three boxes and lots of short tubes. Oh, I really like this one. Let's take a closer look. Oh, -ho! now this really is a castle fit for a king. <laughs> Why don't you try making your very own castle keeper to keep all your precious things in? Oh, rubbish, 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 rubbish. Oh, I've been trying to draw a picture of an alien, but I just can't get his face right. This is rubbish. Oh, hang on. I've got a rubbish idea. Actually, it's not a rubbish idea. It's a great idea about rubbish. 
Let's make something! A fantastic alien who starts off life as a load of old rubbish! Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! Some old scrap paper or newspaper. Some tin foil. Some sticky tape. And some paint. Whoa! Now, to make your very own alien, like this one here, first scrunch up two paper balls like this. There. Now make sure one of your shapes is bigger than the other, like this one here. Now this one is going to be the body, and this smaller one is going to be the head. Now we can cover both shapes in sticky tape and stick them together. Now cover the head and body in foil, scrunching it around him. Now for arms and legs. And for this, we need to roll two thin strips of foil like this. And now two arms, a little bit shorter, like this. And then stick all of your alien bits together. Now you need to paint your alien a really good alien colour. You can choose any colour you like, but I think I'll do him green. You can paint his eyes another colour, like this, to give him a really great alien look. Now leave him to dry. Looking good, Mr Alien. It's time for you to go home! Mm, oh, I know. It's always good to go before a long journey. Um, the bathroom's upstairs, second on your left. All right, nice to meet you. Bye! Oh, where did he go? Oh. Have you ever had one of those moments where you just can't make up your mind what to do? I could try something with paint. Hmm. Oh, I could try something with glue. Oh, I could try something with paper. Mm, I just can't decide. Mm, what to do, eh? What to do? Mm. Hmm, maybe a change of scenery will help inspire me. Too cold. <laughs> hmm. Ah, it's the Egyptian desert. Whew. It's far too hot now. Oh. Wow! Oh, the wild, wild west. Fantastic. That's made up my mind and given me a great idea. Let's try something. Try using slots to make a clever cardboard cactus that never needs any watering. Let's make it. Everything we need will be in the doodle drawers. 
Some card. Some scissors. Some green paint. A sponge. And a black pen. Whoa! Now, to make a clever cactus, like this one here, first draw around your hand. Like this. And your thumb. So it makes a mitten shape. Now, square off the bottom. And cut out this shape. But be careful because scissors are sharp. Now, take your cut-out mitten shape and draw around it onto another piece of card. And then cut this shape out too. Now, you can always ask an adult to help you if you find this a bit tricky. When you've got your cut-out mitten shapes, you're ready to make your slots so that the pieces fit together like this. Draw a straight line on your first piece in the middle from the bottom up to about halfway. And then on the second piece, draw another line in the middle again, but this time from the top down to halfway. So that's one line up to halfway and one line down to halfway. Now, take your scissors and very carefully cut along both of these lines. Be careful and remember, you can always ask an adult to help you with this bit. Now, using a paintbrush or a sponge, put some dark green paint over both of your shapes. Now you can also use light green paint to add more detail. Oh, don't forget to paint both sides. And when both the light green and the dark green paint is dry, it looks like this. This cactus needs spikes. So get your black pen and draw lines all over it. Now for the magic. Slot your pieces together, like this. There, a clever slot cactus that never needs watering. Great for the Wild West. <coughs> you could try slotting triangles together to make this wigwam. <coughs> and how about this slot campfire? Let's take a closer look. Whoa! Wow, look at this, fantastic. I love the peace and quiet of the old Wild West! <laughs> oh no! Ooh. 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 <laughs> that was close, wasn't it? I did. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I best get out of here! Ooh. Oh, phew, that was close. Just about got away with that one. <laughs> Oh, I nearly dropped it then. Have a look at this. It's my ginormous jelly mountain. I just got it from my local jelly superstore. Now, if I put it down here, it'll be nice and safe. <laughs> oh, there was the odd wobble on the way home. But look, I haven't dropped a jot of jelly. <laughs> and I tell you what, my jelly mountain has given me a wonderful wobbly idea. Let's try something. Try making your very own wonderful wobbly picture. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. A plastic plant pot. Some pipe cleaners. Some coloured card. A felt tip pen and some scissors. 
and some sticky tape. <laughs> oh. You'll also need some air drying clay, which you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <coughs> I've got it. <laughs> There's my air drying clay. I'll put it there for later. Now to make a wonderful wobbly picture like this one here. <laughs> Get a piece of coloured paper and draw whatever you want to wobble in your picture. But this is going to be a bird flying in the clouds. You first draw a bird shape. <laughs> there we go, a lovely bird shape. Now how about we get some white paper and draw two fluffy cloud shapes. Now it's a good idea if one of the cloud shapes is smaller than the other. And lastly, let's get some yellow paper, because we're going to draw a yellow sun. And for that, we need to draw a circle. Now, here's a good tip. If you want to draw a circle, draw around something that's round. And when you've drawn all of your shapes, cut them out. But be careful, scissors are sharp. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Next, get some pipe cleaners that match the colours of your shapes. So that will be a grey pipe cleaner for the bird, two white pipe cleaners for our fluffy clouds, and a yellow pipe cleaner for our sun. Let's turn over our shapes now and then stick on our pipe cleaners to the back with sticky tape. Next, wedge a ball of air-drying clay. Here we go. Into a plastic plant pot. There you go, this small one will work. And let's put it in. And you have to push down and squeeze quite firmly. <laughs> right, that's in there OK. Now it's time for the fun part. We're going to make a wobbly picture. You can arrange your pieces however you like, but how about we put the bird flying in front of the clouds with the sun in the background? Now, to do that, let's get our big cloud first, and we're going to push it into the back of the clay here. Now, let's get our sun, and we can push that just in front of the big cloud. Now, it's a good idea as you arrange your different pieces to make the pieces nearer the front slightly shorter. So let's get our bird and our small cloud here and just very, very carefully snip a little bit off the bottom of the pipe cleaner. And about the same off the little cloud. Now, let's push our little cloud in next, just in front of the sun. Because it's shorter, it means we can see all of the pieces. And now, last but not least, let's put our bird flying in front of the clouds. Now we can gently bend the pipe cleaners so we can see everything. Look at this. It's a wonderful wobbly picture. And you can make all sorts of pictures wobble. How about a wobbly aeroplane flying through a wobbly sky? An underwater wobbly sea picture with lots of wobbly fish and wobbly seaweed. Or even a sunflower with a wobbly bee. And those pictures remind me of my jelly here. <laughs> All wibbly and wobbly. <laughs> oh no, not a sneeze now. And to my jelly! Jelly everywhere. I'll just sort that out. Oh, there, that's better. <laughs> now, take a look at this. This wonderful woolly plane picture is great fun to do and looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need wool, blue card, a pencil, a paintbrush, scissors, and PVA gloopy glue. 
Use a pencil to draw a plane on the card. You can use any colour you like, but blue looks good for the sky. Spread glue all over the plane. Then decide what colour you want the different parts of your plane to be and start to colour the plane in with wool like this. For each part of the plane, stick the wool on in different patterns. To finish your picture, stick woolly smoke at the back of the plane to make it look like it's flying through the sky. Doesn't that look fantastic? What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Wow, what a great effect! Now, take a look at this. This brilliant iceberg picture is great fun to make and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need kitchen roll, gloopy PVA glue, paint brushes, scissors, a pen, white paint, crayons, a pencil, coloured paper and some stickers. First, draw some pointy iceberg shapes on blue paper with a white crayon. Now fill in the icebergs with gloopy glue. Place some crumpled kitchen roll over the top. Add more glue on top of that and leave it to dry. Now draw some different sized penguin shapes with a white pencil on some black paper. Cut the penguins out and stick on torn out bits of white paper for the penguins' tummies. Add some orange paper triangles for beaks and white stickers for eyes. Use a black pen to make the pupils. Then stick the penguins onto the icebergs. Finally, add some snow with dots of white paint as a finishing touch. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Fantastic! but it looks very cold. I'm just deciding where to hang this picture of my great, 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 great Uncle Maker. He was really great, you know. Hmm. Now, do you think we look similar? <laughs> do you? <laughs> no? Oh, I wonder where I get my good looks from then. <laughs> All right, I was only joking. Now, where are we going to hang this painting? <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, I tell you what though, it gives me a great idea. Let's try something. Try making a brilliant picture that bursts through the paper. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> some coloured paper and some white card. A black pen and some paint. A pencil, a ruler, and some modelling clay. A glue stick, some sticky stars, and some scissors. Now, to make a brilliant burst through picture, like this one here, you need to get yourself a piece of coloured paper, like this red piece. Very nice. Now get a ball of modelling clay and push it gently into the middle. Now turn the paper over and with a sharp pencil push all the way through the paper into the clay. Now this is a little bit tricky so you might want to ask an adult to help you. There we go. Now if we take out the pencil and remove the clay we're left with a hole in our paper. Now push your finger all the way through like this to make the hole a little bit bigger. There we go. <laughs> Take my finger out. And now we can tear pieces back from the paper like this. Now this makes a big hole in the paper. Hello. <laughs> now do the same again on a different coloured piece of paper that's the same size. Then bring in another piece of paper. This black piece will look really good. Make sure it's the same size as the other pieces of coloured paper and stick the yellow paper on top. 
Now gently push the torn pieces inwards like this. There we go. And then we're going to glue the red piece on top. Lovely. Now we're going to draw a rocket. And we do that by drawing a large rectangle shape with a triangle on the top, a triangle either side, some circles on the big rectangle for windows, and of course, a cloud of smoke at the bottom. Let's get drawing. Once you've drawn your rocket, you can paint it any colour you like. <laughs> then cut it out, but be careful, scissors are sharp. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> now bend the rocket upwards along this edge here. Now you can use your ruler to help you with this. There we are. Put it on there and then gently bend it upwards. There we go. Now we can glue our rocket inside the ripped hole. There we are. Let's stick it in. And now as a finishing touch, we can add some silver sticky stars. Great! Look! It's a rocket bursting through space. Doesn't it look great? And there are lots of other ideas you could try too. How about trying a dolphin splashing out of the sea? Or a superhero flying right out of your picture? And look, I've mended my picture. It's as good as new. <laughs> Oi, careful! Oh, that was close. For a minute there, I thought that football was going to hit my <gasps> picture. Ow! Oh. This book that I'm reading is brilliant. It's so exciting. Listen to this. It was a cold and stormy night. The wind howled and the rain poured as old Albert Maker, the famous fisherman, struggled against the high seas in his tiny fishing boat. He'd hit a rock, and he was sinking fast. What was he going to do? He couldn't see dry land. Then, out of nowhere, came bursts of light, one after the other. A lighthouse! I'm saved! And by the light of the lighthouse, old Albert Maker made his way safely home. Wow, Albert was really brave. You wouldn't catch me sailing on the high seas, no way. <sighs> Ooh, this gives me an idea though. Let's make something. A fantastic lighthouse made out of an empty crisp tube that can light up your room. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! <laughs> An empty cardboard crisp tube and a clear plastic jar with a lid. Some newspaper and a black pen. Some paint. A piece of cardboard and an empty juice carton. Some glue. And some strips of red card and a torch. Oh! Now to make your very own lighthouse, like this one here, first make sure that your juice carton is smaller than your piece of cardboard. Let's have a look. Yes, it is. Now we can use gloopy PVA glue to stick this on. <laughs> now that's in position, we can glue on our crisp tube on top of the juice carton. And when you've done that, leave it to dry. Then we scrunch up some newspaper to cover our juice carton 
and the cardboard, because this is going to be the rocks at the bottom of the lighthouse. Now, the more scrunched up you make it, the better it will look. Glue scrunched up newspaper all over the carton. Now it's dry, we can start painting it. Let's do the crisp tube white. And we can paint the newspaper grey, adding some white and blue paint on top of the grey to make the crushing waves underneath the lighthouse. Now, we need to add some red stripes to our lighthouse like this. Now we do that by adding our red strips of card. Now put glue on one end of one of the bits of card. And then if we wrap it around the tube so it overlaps and glue it together like that, we get a stripe. Fantastic. Start off by doing the bottom one, then do a stripe at the top, and then one in the middle. Now it's dry, we can add some windows and a door with a black pen. Now, let's take the lid off our plastic jar, like that. Turn the jar upside down and then glue the lid on top. Let's use a glue stick for this. There we are. Just put that on there. Perfect. And if we put it on top, we've got ourselves a lighthouse. Fantastic! Now, let's light it up by finding a torch that fits inside. This one looks good. If we turn it on and pop it in, we can put that on top. Look, it looks fantastic. Now, let's see if it works. Let's turn down the lights. There, you've got your very own lighthouse to help you see in the dark. Doesn't it look realistic? Ah, I love the smell of the sea, the crashing waves. <laughs> but then again, maybe I prefer dry land. <laughs> now, take a look at this. It's a brilliant rainbow picture. It was made using chalk pastels and torn paper. It's very easy to do, but makes a picture that looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need blue, light green and dark green paper, some colourful chalk pastels, a ruler, a pencil, a rubber and some glue. To make a rainbow picture, start off by drawing a faint pencil line across your page, just below the middle with a ruler. Starting at your pencil line, draw a big curve with a red chalk pastel in the middle of the paper, like this, on top of the pencil line. Now do the same in orange above it. And do it once again with yellow. We are going to keep following this pattern with the colours of the rainbow. That's green, blue, purple and indigo. Use your hand and fingers to smudge the rainbow colours right across the page. It gives a wonderful hazy effect. Now wipe your hands. Then to make the hills, tear off one corner of the paper, making sure that you leave two straight edges. Now you can match up the corner of the torn out piece to the bottom corner of the rainbow picture to make a hill. Now do the same again for the other side with some dark green paper. You can add as many hills as you like and stick them down. Now take a clean rubber and rub out any leftover pencil line. And as a finishing touch, draw flowers on the hills with the chalk pastels. Beautiful! What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! What 
a lovely rainbow. Now, oh, let's make a picture out of pom poms. What do you think they're making? It's a terrific toadstool! Now we're... Hey! It's Minute Make Time! Come on! And here's what we're going to make today! A spoon alien! It's out of this world! <clears throat> Actually, it's made out of a plastic spoon. Yeah! <laughs> and to make it, you will need some green stickers, a green plastic spoon, a green pipe cleaner, a black pen, a glue stick, and we'll also need some googly eyes and some air drying clay, which you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back before you can say, oh, he's gone to the shop again. <coughs> I've got them. Here are my googly eyes, and I've got some air drying clay, and it's been rolled into two small balls like that, and a slightly larger sausage shape. There we go. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Oh, well, thank you, Toki. I think I can do it, although I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, though. I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Great! Let's make it in a minute! Right, get the green plastic spoon and the googly eyes, and we're going to glue them on to the back of the spoon like this. There's one. There's one googly eye. Let's get the other one. There we go. Right, two googly eyes. Now let's get a pen and draw a nose like that and a mouth. Now let's give him ears with the stickers. There's one alien ear. Let's put another alien ear in. Halfway there. Halfway already. There we go. He's looking good. Now we're going to get the green pipe cleaner and wrap it around the spoon to give him arms. There's one arm. There's another arm like that. And now let's put these balls of clay onto the ends. These are going to be the hands. There we go, there's one. And there's the other one. And now if we get this sausage of clay and squeeze it into feet, we can stick in a spoon alien. I did it! Only just. <laughs> yes, that was quite close actually, but if you've got more than a minute, you can wait for the clay to dry and then paint your alien a nice alien colour, like green. In fact, you could make a whole family of aliens. How about a silver alien made with a plastic silver spoon and a glittery pipe cleaner? Or even a tiny alien made by carefully cutting a plastic spoon in half. Spoon aliens made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Stick two googly eyes to the back of your spoon. Draw on a nose and a mouth. Add stickers for ears and wrap a pipe cleaner around the spoon to make arms. Then press two small lumps of clay to the ends of the pipe cleaner for hands. And finally, stand the spoon up in a lump of clay and you've made your spoon alien. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? <laughs> now, take a look at this. What a brilliant rainbow pastel picture. It's great fun to make and looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need coloured card, chalk pastels, scissors, a black pen, a glue stick and white stickers. Draw large wavy lines on one half of a piece of coloured card with chalk pastels like this. Then on the other side of the card, draw more lines, but in a different pattern. Now draw a big fish on one pattern and a baby fish on the other and cut them out. Stick on white stickers for eyes, then add details with a black pen. Next, draw some seaweed with a green-coloured pastel onto some sea-coloured card. Now, glue both your fish onto your background. And you've made a fantastic, brightly-coloured underwater scene. 
What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that effective? It makes me think of the sea. What do you think of my cardboard building? It's great, isn't it? Yeah. And it's made up completely of old cardboard boxes. The best thing about it is that it can be anything I want it to be. Hello there, I am King Maker, and this is my cardboard castle. <laughs> You see, you can make boxes into anything if you just use a little imagination. In fact, that's given me a great idea. Let's try something. Try making a brilliant box street using all sorts of boxes and empty packets. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> empty boxes and packets. <laughs> Some cardboard, some paper, and some sticky tape. Some paint. A black felt tip pen, some tissue paper, and some gloopy PDA glue. Gloopy! <laughs> Whoa! Now look at this box street picture. It looks great, doesn't it? And to make it, you need to start arranging your empty packets and cardboard boxes onto your piece of cardboard. Now line them up along the bottom of the cardboard like this. You can put them in whatever order you like, but it's a good idea to put a small box next to a bigger one. You can even add a pointy roof like this, maybe on top of one of your tall buildings. And for that, we need to cut out a circle. Now, a good way of doing this is to draw around a bowl. <laughs> there we are, a perfect circle. Now we need to cut this out, but be careful, scissors are sharp. <laughs> there, a circle. Now we need to make a snip along here up to the middle of our circle. This will help us bend it into a cone shape. Let's stick it together with a bit of sticky tape. Now, this is a bit tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you. There, a lovely cone. <laughs> and we can use this as a nice roof on top of one of our buildings. When you're happy with the positions of everything, stick it all down with gloopy glue. Mm. Then cover the boxes and the background with a layer of gloopy glue and torn up pieces of tissue paper. <laughs> when it's dry, you're ready to paint your box buildings. You can choose whatever colours you like, but it looks good if the buildings are painted different colours. And don't forget to paint the sky as well. When it's all dry, it'll look something like this. And look, you can even paint a sun in the sky if you want to. Now let's add extra detail by painting on windows and doors. Then add some details with a black pen. <laughs> when it's finished, it looks like this. What a great effect. You can turn your boxes into anything. It's up to you. How about doing a nighttime box street with the moon and stars in a dark blue sky? Or how about this really big one? It's a whole street made out of big boxes and tubes. <laughs> what a great effect. Let's take a closer look. Cardboard boxes are great. They're really useful and you can make your picture as big or as small as you like. Ooh, <laughs> that was fun. 